Hello students, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be looking at the pie chart. Alright, so why do we call this the pie chart? Well, it's circular like a pie. Alright, most pies are circular and we cut up, we section up the pie chart the way that we would slice a pie, whether pizza pie, apple pie, any kind of pie, we slice it up. Sometimes we'd get big, bigger slices, sometimes we'd slice it in, try and make the slices equal. Sometimes some are tiny, some bigger, right? Now the pie chart is a way of representing information so we can compare the quantities to each other, right? You can have a pie chart that has no actual numerical amount given and example in this case so all we would do then is compare the size the, the, the just looking at it comparing the size in terms of the fraction of the pie the fraction of the circle whether it's a quarter a half one eighth depending on how it is divided up Sometimes we're told the total and then you would use that the, the fraction that you see or that you estimate, work it with the total and try to find out what actual amount the different partitions of the pie represent. Sometimes we are given figures, sometimes we are given percentages, sometimes we are given degrees, sometimes we are given actual amounts. So we have to really just look at what we're given at each time and make comparisons between the things. So for this pie chart, this particular pie chart shows how Mrs. Brown spends her salary. All right. Now, we're dealing with the circle. We're given no actual amounts. We're just given relative sizes of the pie. From working with the circle, you know, we have a good idea of what is a quarter of a circle, a half of a circle, that kind of thing, right? So we, we have to rely on that knowledge when we're not given actual numbers to work with. So Mrs. Brown gets her salary every month. Typically, you get a salary every month. That's the money you are paid at your job for doing your job. Every month she collects her salary and she makes a budget. So a budget is when you write down what you're going to spend your money on and how much money you're going to spend on each thing. So Mrs. Brown wants to make sure that all the important things that she has to do for the month, she, she's able to do that using her salary so she knows she has her rent to pay and her rent actually takes up a big chunk of her salary so the rent is the money that you pay to the person who owns the house that you live in if you don't own the house you pay rent to the person who owns the house for allowing you to stay in the house so she pays her rent she has other bills to pay, so for example, her electric bill, her water bill, her telephone bill, her cable bill, her gas bill, other bills that she has to pay. Then she has, she buys clothes. Not much is spent on clothes because you wouldn't be buying clothes every month. So maybe she puts aside a little bit each month until she really needs clothes and she pulls that clothing funds to go and buy the clothes that she needs. Again, she has to pay for transportation, so maybe she, whether she drives her own car or not. So if she drives her own car, she has to put aside money for gas. Because remember, she needs to get to and from work or wherever she's going. She has to put aside money for gas for the month. Or if she takes the bus, she has to put aside, she has to work out how much bus fare she pays over the month and put that aside. Plus, she has to eat. 
So Mrs. Brown has put aside this fraction of her money for food for the month. Whether she's going to just go and do one monthly shopping or she's going to do weekly shopping but she knows how much she will need for the month and she's going to save some of, some of her money. She's not just going to collect her salary every month and spend all of it and then have nothing at the end of the month again until she gets paid. So each time she gets paid, she puts aside some of the money for savings. So this is a very smart woman. She doesn't want to spend her money on unnecessary things and then by the time she needs to do these necessary things, she doesn't have enough. So she makes a budget and she says, I'm going to put aside that amount for that thing. Alright, so looking at the pie chart and how Mrs. Brown has decided to cut up her pie, her salary pie, let's answer the question. On what does she spend most of her salary? Which thing takes up the biggest chunk of her salary? Or if you were eating this salary pie, who would get the biggest slice of the pie? Just looking at it, even though we're not given any actual numbers to work with, just looking at it, we're seeing that the rent. The rent takes up the biggest slice of the pie. So maybe Mrs. Brown lives in a very posh neighborhood where the rent is high. She lives in a nice house, nice neighborhood, but she has to pay for, for the she has to pay for all of that. So the rent is high. Or number two, for what does she use a quarter of her salary? Now remember. When we have our circle, so that's a half, each of these is a half, each of those is a quarter. Four quarters in the circle. So, on, so which one of those look, look like this, this size? Which one of these looks like this size? It has to be the savings. See that? It's a quarter of the circle. So she saves a quarter of her salary. Savings takes up a quarter of the salary. Which two costs are almost the same? So looking at the pie, which two slices are almost the same? Well, the transport and the clothes, they're pretty close. Not exactly the same, but they're pretty, pretty close. So transport, they're almost the same size. The same money that she puts aside for transport, she puts aside for clothes. Maybe she doesn't buy the clothes every month, but she puts that money aside to, to add up to the one from the month before, the month before. So when she needs the clothes, she can just get into that clothes money and, and do what she wants, right? Very smart lady. So number four, which three costs are equal to her savings? So remember we said the savings take up a quarter of the circle. So which three costs, when you combine them, they take up a quarter of the circle like the savings does. So it would be these three, see that? They take up a quarter when you put them together. Just like all the savings take up a quarter of the circle, these three also take up a quarter. So that's food, clothes, and transport. Together, together, they take up a quarter of the circle. See that? Together. All right, so even though we were not given any numbers, we weren't told that, we weren't even told the total what her salary was, we weren't told any amounts of money what these cost, but just by working with fractions, 
a fraction of the pie. The, the pie is divided up into sections, quarters, this took up a quarter, these three took up a quarter, and we can estimate the rent is almost a half. The rent, so the rent and the bills together take up a half of her salary, right? That's a lot. That's a lot of your salary for the rent and bills. All right, so let's look at the other pie. So this pie is telling us the ways that children travel to school. Different ways that children travel to school. So you know children get to school all kinds of ways. Some take the public bus. Some take the school bus. Some get there by their parents' car. The parents drop them to school in their personal car. Some actually walk to school. If they live pretty close to school, they can just walk to school. And some take the taxi. And I'm sure there are other ways that children can get to school. But for this particular school, when the children were interviewed and asked, how do you get to school? These are the ways that the children said they got to school. Some say, we take the bus, the public bus, right? Some say, yes, we take the bus, but it's the school bus a private school bus, or maybe the bus owned by the school. You have different school buses too. Some say, well, our parents take us to school in their car. Some say, well, I just live down the road, so I walk to school. And some children said, well, we take the taxi to school. So let's look at the questions and compare and see what they're asking. Which is the most popular form of transportation at this school that the children use to get to school? Well, clearly, by far, by far, the most popular form is the public bus at this school. Maybe other schools, they would have different um, forms that are more popular, but at this school, the public bus is very clearly the most popular, by far, 68%. Remember, percent means out of 100. So if we're using the entire pie, the entire school population, if we're comparing it to 100, we're saying, 68 out of the 100 use the bus. That's a big chunk. That's almost three quarters. It's getting close to three quarters, right? Remember, 75 out of the 100 would be three quarters. And this is 68 out of the 100. Number two, which is the least popular way of getting to school? So the least would be the one that has the less, the fewer, the fewest number of students going that route. And that would be the 4%. Only four children out of every 100 children take the taxi. Only four out of every 100 take the taxi. What fraction of the children take the bus? What fraction? Now remember, these are given in percentages. We are not, we are not told the number of children. Sometimes on the, the pie chart, you are told the actual numbers. You're, you might be given the total, or you might be given the number of each segment, and then you have to add them to find the total. So you have to look what you're given here. We're given percentages. So they're asking for the fraction that take the bus. 68% take the bus, we can express a percentage as a fraction because we know percent means out of 100. So 68 out of every 100 students take the bus. All we have to do now is to reduce that to its lowest terms. So let's divide by 4. I think 4 can go. So 4 into 6 
fold one time, remainder two and four into twenty-eight seven, and four into one hundred twenty-five. So this is the lowest term. Seventeen twenty-fifth. Seventeen out of every twenty-five students take the public bus. All right. And this should be public bus because remember, there is also a school bus, right? So that's public bus. What percentage of the children walk and take taxis? So they're asking us to combine two categories here. They're asking us to combine the taxi and the walk, students who walk. So, and they want that in percent, it's already in percent, so... 8% walk, 4% take the taxi, 8% plus 4% that gives 12%, right? 12% of the children walk and take taxis. They, they want us to put it together. Okay, so sometimes the pie chart can be, the amounts can be given in percentages, sometimes even degrees. If, they are, if it's expressed in percentages and you are asked to express those as fractions, just remember, put the amount over 100. Let's say they gave you the amounts in degrees. We are dealing with a pie. A full circle remember there are 360 degrees in a circle so if they give you the amounts in degrees and they're asking to express any quantity as a fraction just put that degree over the full 360 the full 360 degrees in the circle right and you will and reduce, reduce it, and you will get, right? If they gave you the total, so let's say that they, they, they said there are 2,194 students, let's say. And then they want to know how many students took the bus. Since you know that 68% of the students take the bus, so you would find 68% of the total work out what that is and you'll get the actual number of students who take the bus and you do that for anything they want to know how many children are taken to school in their parents car 10 percent are taken in their parents car so 10 percent of the total if you are given the total right this is if you are given the total 10% of the total and you'd work that out, divide and cancel and, you know, just work it like a regular fraction. If they give you the amounts and they don't give the total, you can just add, the, add everything up to get the total and then work out the percent or the degree or whatever it is you're, you're given. Look for what you're given and work with that. If it's percent, it's out of 100 degrees out of 360. If it's just fractions you're given, if they just cut up the pie, and so you're, you're, you need now to look at the circle and estimate. We know the standard circle cut this way, those are halves, right? Cut that way, those are halves. This is a quarter, so that's a half together. That's three quarters. And you have different ways so you can have a circle. You cut it into quarters. Cut those in half again so those are eighths. That kind of thing. So you have to have an idea of what does a quarter of a circle look like? What does three quarters of a circle look like? What does one eighth of a circle look like? Right? Practice cutting up your circle so that if you are not given any amount, you are able to look at the pie, look at the slices, and compare. 
to see which one is almost one third of the circle. One third of the circle. So we cut it into, try the best we can to cut it into three equal parts, as best as we can, just to have an idea, right, of what one third of a circle looks like, what one eighth of a circle looks like, a quarter of a circle, a half of a circle, right? So just be familiar with those things. When you're dealing with the pie chart, remember it's a pie, it's a circle, and it's going to be segmented into slices. Right? So if you have benefited, students, if you have benefited, I just want you to drop a line in the comments just to say thank you, miss, for your effort. I would appreciate that. And I would appreciate if you would also share the video so that other students can benefit from the information. Remember, our mission is to remove the fear of maths. Too many people are afraid of mass and we want to drive away that fear. We want to dissipate it. So as many persons as you can share these videos with to let them see how easy it is, then all the better for everybody eventually. So share with as many persons as you can. If you have not subscribed to the channel, now would be a great time for you to do that and to also click that bell so you are notified as soon as a new video lands you will be the first to know and you can jump on it and stay on top of things keep sharp keep focused remember to practice 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 as scholars as mathematicians you must practice that is how you're going to hone your skills that's how you're going to get sharp and stay sharp if you check our video catalog and you don't see a particular topic that you're yearning to master that topic, you really want to, to, to understand the concepts and you, you're not seeing it, just drop a line in the comments and let me know which topic you want me to do a video on. I will certainly do that for you. So my scholars, take care and I'll see you in the next video.